decision. He's the guy, the city manager who fired uh, Bill Lee. Um, did, did, is that a wrongful termination? It looks like a wrongful termination, Greg, and for a number of issues that have now come to light and with the FOIA requests that Judicial Watch went after. We now see that there was a unit of the Department of Justice, the Community Relations Service, and they were there not only paying for rallies to support the rallies against Zimmerman, but they were exerting pressure by meeting with the RNC. They had their upcoming convention in Tampa. They were working with the NAACP, with a number of officials in the NAACP, and they were basically fostering a political environment, and the city had a choice to make. So this definitely has the indication of a wrongful yeah. termination. Michael, I want to get your take, because, you know, you're the lawyer here, and, but, you know, it's always, you know, the police department, law enforcement that makes decisions on probable cause and, of course, prosecutors to prosecute, since when does the city manager get involved? I can actually speak from two different hats, uh, Greg, and hi, David. It's been a while. Um, I'm a former mayor myself in New Jersey, and we had a city manager form of government. And if the city manager felt that this chief breached his trust to the community, no doubt there are a tremendous amount of political overtones in this case. But it appears that he ignored the low threshold of probable cause. He ignored his investigators. He implicitly... But how would the city manager know that? Well, I think... He's it, not a lawyer. He's not law enforcement. He has no experience there, in that. And as a, a civilian, he's making a political judgment. Gee, I think there's probable cause. He doesn't know that. We can't assume that every judgment he made was political. There's a concept of res ipsa loquitur. You have a young man who's killed, and you have another person, and he didn't have a weapon. And truthfully, being unarmed right there of itself is more than probable cause, and an arrest should have been effected yeah. before I, 40 I know days. It's well, it the it. thing speaks for itself. But David, look, um, Norton Bonaparte testified during the trial, and he was forced to admit that he's the one who screwed up the identification of the 911 voice calls. <laughs> he should have fired himself. He, actually, he should have. By that, there was actual proof of something that was done wrong. There was no proof, even in light of someone being shot, uh, Trayvon Martin being killed, and no one had known all the facts of the incident that played out at that time. But we really have to go back to the political makeup of what happened since this incident in February of 2012. Without a doubt, there was politics. We now have a track. We now have facts. We have FOIA requests. We have email records. For, we have a recording me, of the Forgive me for interrupting, David. Lead, no. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that a low standard like probable cause was no doubt met when there was a young man that was felled, and he emphatically accepted a self-defense argument despite all of his investigators saying that an arrest should be taking place. Well, the arrest... How do you overcome the that? But the investigation Michael, how do you was also the not fact complete that local at that time. Prosecutors, Michael, how do you overcome the fact that even local prosecutors thought there should be no charges here? You have a protocol to follow. You let justice and courts mete out guilt and you exonerate somebody who self-defended himself. But on the streets, you have a young man without a weapon who has a handful of Skittles and is dead. That's probable cause, and it's inappropriate for a police chief not to err on the side of caution. Look, if you're looking at domestic violence cases, if a woman has a bruise and there's a gentleman there, the protocol is to arrest and let yeah. the courts ferret Michael, this out. Here's, here's the, the contradiction that plays out in this case. There's another case in Florida, Trevor Dooley. 69-year-old black man shoots a 41-year-old white man, right. uses Florida Stand Your Ground law. He's not show he waits for the police, calls his attorneys, he's back at work on Monday. The similarities in this case is that Trevor Dooley was underneath the 41-year-old man who was holding him, choking him. He prodded him with a gun and then he right. shot him. Similarities in this case, different I outcomes. I get your point Why? by analogy. The dynamic it's we're out of time. not for police chiefs to decide, it's for the courts to mm -hmm. decide. And that's what happened. He delayed justice by that 40-day period of time, well, and that trust Michael, was breached. Michael, you're kind of arguing against yourself if you're saying that it's for the courts because a politician got involved here, Norton Bonaparte. Thanks very much, uh, Michael and David. Good to see you both. Good to we'll see you, Greg. We'll do this again. Thanks. So we're just watching an interesting moment play out in court because now you have Don West who is making an effort to prove that the 